attention and so we definitely want to do that before we get into the word and the message from Pastor Steve Williams tonight. So uh, we'll go ahead. We have a uh, short little video for you to watch for your entertainment called Memories. a little safe to see. Gotta chase the dream that you placed in me.
Well, I would be lying to you if I wasn't if I didn't tell you I was crying over there in the wings. That's why we built those areas over there so you can't see the pastoral staff crying, weeping for the congregation and the ignorant sheep that stray away. No, I'm just kidding. That's why the Bible calls us sheep. Because you need a shepherd. And it has been my honor and my pleasure to watch you grow. From moments like herding cats to moments where you're leading with strong hearts and pure faith and clean hands. Uh, it has been an extreme honor. I'm grateful that uh, Pastor Steve Williams will now help me. Uh, we got a man down right there. <laughs> gift down, gift down. Um, but uh, I will now honor the graduates by calling out their name and inviting them to come to the platform with me as we celebrate not only what they're completing, but where God is leading them. So I'm really excited and sad. For some, it may be your first graduate. I know that's the case for myself and my others, friends and family that are in the room. I know it is their last graduate out of their house. That doesn't mean they're moving out, right, mom and dad? <laughs> we know they're broke. <laughs> Amen, amen. Man, that's how you get amens? <laughs> Without further ado, it is my honor to present the North Point Student Ministry Class of 2021. Our first student, Abigail Renee Quick. Her parentals are her sister and brother-in-law, Amber and Brian Kazarich. She is graduating from Wiregrass Ranch High School future. She is moving back to Indiana after graduation with undecided as far as college or career, but her verse that she has chosen is Philippians 4.13, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Yeah. Our next graduate, Addison Nicole Paul. Her parents are Bruce, Wayne, and Heather Paul. She is graduating from the gifted school of the Pauls. <laughs> Homeschool. Graduating with her AA at the end of the summer and transferring to USF in the fall to study mass communications. Her life verse that she has chosen is Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our next student we'd like to invite to the platform is Ashley Crosby. Parents Aaron and April Spinsley graduating from the gifted school of the Spinsleys also homeschool. Uh, she plans to attend PHSC, uh, pursuing a dental hygienist program, her life vert. Yeah. <laughs> Got some people who care about oral hygiene in here tonight. <laughs> Another amen. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 9.10 is her life verse. Whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all your might, for in it the realm of the dead. Where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Ashley, very proud of you. Next, we'd like to invite Caitlin. Caitlin Elizabeth Weber. Her parents are Zane... I know Dallas Weber, graduating from Lando Lake High School. Future plans are to, to attend PHSC, then go on to University of South Florida to pursue a degree in medicine. All right. Her life verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. 
congratulations. Thank you. If you'll notice, we've had a lot of female graduates so far, just like my life. Just Woo. there's some <laughs> there's some boys coming. But now we'd also like to welcome another female, Kendra Marie Stevenson. Todd and Claudia Stevenson are her parents. Todd's school for the gifted, <laughs> homeschool, but also graduating from Grace Preparatory Academy. She will move on to pursuing cosmetology license to specialize in hairstyles for weddings. Ooh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen in the room, this is who you need to call. She did my hair tonight. Just kidding. Her life verse she's chosen is Philippians 2.15, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Congratulations. Children. Now a young man. Aha. I told you we had a few. Caden Andrew Meekum. Parents are Jason and Kristen Meekum. The all wise school of the Meekums. Homeschool. I just make these up on the fly, by the way, just to, if you guys were wondering. You knew that? Yeah, he knew that. You could tell. All right. Caden plans to finish his AA degree that he began through dual enrollment from PHSC. Then he would like to get into the field of forensic etymology. Did I, did I say that correct? Yeah, all right, because that's way above my... That looks like what Corey would read to you on a Sunday morning to me. <laughs> Caden plans to join the summer internship program whoop, whoop, here at North Point to continue to play guitar and worship. You may have seen his shining face on a Sunday or Wednesday. His life... <laughs> yeah. His life verse he's chosen is 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18. For our light... And monetary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That was an awkward moment there. Maybe we should have rehearsed that. Grace and Courtney. Her parents are Lance and Kim. Should I said me? Me and like, I, I kind of had those moments. What if Jesus is reading the scripture? Does he say himself? Or, no, Lance and Kim Courtney graduating from Cypress Creek High School. Future plans. Woo! Like, a middle schooler is really excited about Cypress Creek. Awesome. Future plans are to attend HCC in the fall and pursue dance. Her life first that she has chosen is Psalms 23, 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. Hi, Dad. Don't you do it. Jada Grace Wells. <laughs> Parents, Stephen and Jana Wells, graduating from Lando Lakes High School, future career to be a songwriter, which, by the way, I heard she's in a songwriting uh, school. Yeah, like a great opportunity there, and to be a worship leader. Her life first that she has chosen, life verses she has chosen, is Psalms 71. 14 through 16. But I will keep on hoping for your help. I will praise you more and more. I will tell everyone about your righteousness all day long. I will proclaim your saving power. Though I am not skilled with words, I will praise your mighty deeds. O oh, sovereign Lord, I tell everyone that you alone are just. Amen. <laughs> Jordan Faith Wells. Her parents, she reversed it. Jana and Steve Wells. 
same person. He sometimes goes by Stephen. <laughs> Graduating from Lando Lakes High School. Future plans to be an elementary school teacher slash school administrator. <laughs> Her life verse, Philippians 1.20. For I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past, and I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ whether I live or die. Amen. Matthew Negroni. Matthew is one of our newer students, but I am honored that he is here. He's been coming since last fall in this school year, so it is an honor to and I may have to get you to read your parents' names. <laughs> Adalberto, was that pretty close? That, that, was, that was pretty close. And Ada, Ada, Some, I was, I'm, I'm close, I'm working on it. Graduating from Sun Lake High School, the future plans is to get a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. Woo! Say that 10 times fast. And hopefully to also get into active duty commission in the army and become an engineer officer station in Munich, Germany. His life first that he has chosen is Matthew 19, 26. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Piper McKenzie Shorey. Oh, Matthew, my bad, sorry. Start again, Piper McKenzie Shorey. <laughs> Parents, Rob and Lisa Shorey, graduating from Sun Lake High School, future plans. She's been accepted at the University of South Florida, pursuing a BS, BSN in nursing, labor and delivery, and surgery. Woo. Her life first that she has chosen is Romans 8:18. 8, Yet yeah, what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that he will reveal in us later. Amen. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, I'm very grateful that this young lady uh, made it tonight. Didn't even know that possibly tonight was even senior night, but she is a senior and I'm glad she's here. She started coming here in 2017 when we first opened up at our very first youth night, her and her sister Happened to just come on a Wednesday night. Didn't know anybody. And now she's a senior graduating this year. Jessica Crespo. Her parents, Richard and Cindy Crespo, graduating from Wiregrass Ranch High School. Future plans, a health and science degree from Florida Gulf Coast University. And her scripture verse tonight, Isaiah 41.10, fear not for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with a righteous, mighty right hand. Amen. <laughs> Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Well, church family, friends, your class of 2021. Now, seniors, I just read, people now all know your middle names. Uh, but inside your gift box, there's been some intentionality, um, things, for you to, 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 things for you to read, things for you to engage in. But also, there's a, there's a letter in there that's from me, but also there's some advice from your small group leaders many who have been pouring into your life, maybe some of them you've never, but I also reached out to some of our former seniors. And so there's some tough love words in there as well. But I wanna close out this moment with a prayer for you and for your future and your next steps. Uh, Father God, Lord, I thank you so much. Lord, for the past seven years, Lord, so many of these students have grown up here, have experienced 
incredible life change, Lord, whether at the warehouse or at the high school or opening up this building. And so many have come at a different times, Lord. They've joined your story at different times. They've joined the North Point story at different seasons. But Lord, whatever moment that they walk through those doors, Lord, they're here. And Lord, we're here to celebrate them. We're here to honor them. We're here to pray over them. We're here to pray for them, God. We're praying over their next steps, Lord, whether you're taking them away to a university or you're taking them away to another country. God, we we pray for their their future. We pray for their well-being. But Lord, we pray for the light that you have put inside of them. God, we're here as their pastors and leaders and small groups and, and friends and family. God, we're here to fan that flame tonight, God, as they step into the future, Lord. It's, they'll be challenged tonight, God. But Lord, we celebrate them, the accomplishments, the, what they've done over the last four years, and now all of that coming to completion, God. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be their pastor, to be their friend, to be a father-like figure, and to even some on this stage to be their PE coach. (laughs) God, you have blessed and honored me with such an incredible group. Lord, this is the biggest and most robust group of seniors that we have seen come through these halls. And because of that, Lord, this place will never be the same because of it. Lord, may all that come behind us find us faithful. In your mighty name, amen. motto, always be prepared. What an incredible night. What an incredible night full of memories, family, and friends. It's incredible to think about what the future holds, what the past has been. I'm so excited to be able to be here with you tonight. As Pastor Lance said, my name is Steve Williams, one of the pastors here at North Point. And I want to just say once again, welcome to the graduates and the families. And thank you guys so much uh, for being here today to, to be together, to love on each other. As I said, my name is Steve Williams. I am a father. I'm a husband. Uh, By profession, I'm an educator, a pastor, I'm an author, but most importantly, I'm a regular, ordinary, flawed guy who is chasing an extraordinary God and looking to be like his son, Jesus Christ. And it is in that pursuit tonight that I want to talk a little bit about what God has placed on my heart through his word tonight for us. And this is a message for the graduates, but it is also a message that can be applied to every single one of us. And my hope tonight is that God would speak to each one of you in a unique way and only, as only his Holy Spirit can, because I believe that this night could be so impactful. So if you've been part of Journey the last couple of weeks or, or even next week, we've been part of a legacy series. So last week, Pastor Lanch spoke and he, he really talked about this idea of legacy. And of course, it's something that we do every May because it intersects so nicely with graduation, this idea of legacy. It's a word that we've often heard of when we think about sports figures or political figures, business leaders, professionals of all kinds. It's this idea of legacy. So I want to take just a moment for those who weren't here last week, kind of unpack what legacy is. Legacy is the story that's bigger than yourself. Legacy is the story that's bigger from yourself. It's everything that's come before and everything that will last 
when you're gone. Legacy is the past and the future met and intersected with your life. Your life is the hinge. The legacy is what comes before and it's what will go after. It's the bigger story. If you will, your life is the pivot point. We're going to talk about that tonight, the idea of a pivot point, through the lens of a very complex guy in the Bible. But this idea of a pivot point is so profound at graduation time because this is a time that we can make a decision, that we naturally look to the past, we naturally look to the future, and we make some intentional decisions. You know, for many of you, when you hear me say the word pivot, you're probably thinking of this picture. (laughs) Pivot! Some of you aren't laughing. You're not a fan of 90s TV shows. It's okay. It is Ross. But this idea of pivot can apply to any single one of us, not just to graduates. I mean, you think about it, the graduates, they're, they're coming to the end of their K-12 education, and they've all been in that classroom that pivots from teaching to learning, right? That moment where you're not just going, uh-huh, 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 to the teacher when you're like, oh. It's that pivot moment. There's that pivot moment for an athlete where they practice and they practice and they practice, and then it's on the field, and it's performance, performance, performance. It's that pivot moment in a character, in a movie, or in a book where it's all of their backstory, and then they become a dynamic character, and they begin to change. The idea in a relationship, when you pivot from just interesting to that could be the one. It's the pivot moment. It's everything that's come before and everything that's come that's still to come, and it's how it's intersecting with your life. And as we celebrate the graduates tonight, I want to encourage you to think about pivot points. And again, this is especially applicable to the graduates, but any single one of us can apply this. As we consider what has been your story so far, what kind of story do you want to leave after? And for some of us, We don't think about the idea of legacy. We don't think about where we're going to go because we're not intentional. Long ago, I heard a quote from Andy Stanley. It says, everyone ends up somewhere in life. A few people end up somewhere on purpose. (laughs) Right? And for some, they're graduating and they're like, woohoo, I'm done with high school. I'm done with mom and dad. I'm moving out. Where are you moving? I don't know. How are you going to pay for it? I don't know. (laughs) Because where are they going? They're not sure. Very few go somewhere on purpose. So we're going to talk about that tonight, the idea of legacy. If you have your Bibles with you, I would encourage you to open up to the book of Joshua. If you don't, turn on your phone and scroll to the book of Joshua. We're going to look at the story of a guy, and some of you who were here last week, you're like, wait a minute, didn't Pastor Lance talk about Joshua? Yes, he did. And we're going to look at the other side of Joshua's life. But I want to take a moment and just step back and look at the big picture of Joshua's life. What came before, what came during, and what came after. We don't have time to read them, of course, tonight, but we're going to consider the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Joshua, and the book of Judges, because if we read them all tonight, we would be here till midnight. We're not going to do that. But when you consider that big picture, you see that this is a guy who had key pivot points in his life. In fact, three ones, we're not going to camp out on all of them. But this is a guy who's had pivot points. Again, if you were here last week, you heard Pastor Lance talk about God saying to Joshua, be strong and courageous. About here's the guy that led the nation of Israel across the Jordan River, an incredible scene. You heard Pastor Lance talk about stones of remembrance and how they took stones from the Jordan River and how they created this opportunity to remember God. We're going to revisit some of those ideas tonight, but we're going to look at the bigger story And there's portions of this story that are joyous and they're wonderful. And there's parts of this story that are sad and regrettable. This is a story of opportunity. It's a story of power. It's a story of great choices and of terrible choices. The story of Joshua. And we're going to start at the third pivot point. This is the pivot point that's going to matter the most to us tonight. This is a pivot point that comes near the end of Joshua's life, near the end of his leadership, when he is getting ready to pass on the mantle of leadership to the other leaders of Israel. 
It's somewhat of a famous pivot point, but we're going to examine it by looking at what happened before and what happens afterwards. So if you do have your Bible, I want to invite you to turn to Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. This is the pivot point. It will be on the screen for those who don't have their Bibles. Joshua 24, verses 14 and 15. I'll be reading tonight in the NLT. This is Joshua speaking. He says, So fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worship when they live beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the God your ancestors served before the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. What an amazing pivot point where Joshua says, in in, in light of all that's happened before, in light of Egypt and the Euphrates and the Jordan and the Amorites and the Hittites and all the other ites, everything in the past and in light of what is to come, choose today whom you will serve. It's a pivot point. Choose today. Choose today what direction you're going to go, what's your intentionality going to be. Let's start a little bit by looking at the previous, what had come, the prequel, if you will. In the book of Exodus, I didn't mention that earlier, we're going to add reading that, we'll be here till two. In the book of Exodus, you see the nation of Israel coming out of Egypt. It's an incredible story. They're led by a guy named Moses. And coming out of Egypt was an amazing experience, certainly joyful, a little confusing. They were trying to figure out where they were going. And shortly after coming out of Egypt, this leader, Moses, sends these spies into the land, the promised land, an incredible land. He sends these spies in, and Joshua is one of them. And these guys come back, and 10 of them are like, dude. That place is scary. The guys are giants. There's no way we're going to handle that. And this is a pivot point in Joshua's life because he's young. And he's been entrusted with this major opportunity. And he and his other guy named Caleb were like, but but God. But God is bigger than the giants. But all these 10 guys are like, nope, it's scary. And he has this pivot point. Do I go with the popular answer or do I go with God? And it's a pivot point for him because he chose God. And he continues on, and I have to believe that Moses took note of Joshua because he begins to mentor him. And you get to see Joshua grow up as the nation of Israel wanders in the wilderness, and you you see Joshua under Moses' shadow, showing himself to be courageous. Of course, it's kind of easy to be courageous when you're a follower. Things change when you become independent. Right? Graduates, that's important to know. It's a little easier to be courageous in mom and dad's house. A little hard to pay the rent when it's just you. There's your amen, Lance. There's your amen. So you have Joshua. He's been mentored by Moses. And then the time comes. You see in Deuteronomy chapter 31, Moses is an old man, and it's time to pass the mantle. And Joshua, who's grown up under this great leader, is like, oh, it's time. It's time for him to step out. It's time for him to step out from Moses' shadows. Just like our graduates are stepping out from the high school stage, they're stepping out just like Joshua is saying, all right, it's real. And you see this changing of the mantle, this power transfer. Now Joshua's in charge. Joshua's in charge, and he remembers, whoo, it was one thing to be courageous as a follower, but now I'm the guy. And now we're going over the river, and now we've got a lot of battles, and they're still giants is God still bigger than the giants? Because now I'm the one. I'm not living in Moses' house anymore. And you see God meet Joshua, and that's that famous scene where he says, be bold and courageous. I am with you. You're going to be successful. Oh, good. Right? God says, I'm with you. You have this idea where God is saying to Joshua, it's going to be okay. And there's another pivot point. Do I run and hide? Or do I boldly believe that God's vision for my life is real? 
do I boldly believe that everything that he said about me is true and I can rest assured on that because there's scary days ahead? Do I take that scary road because God said he was with me or do I fade away and just say, everyone, y'all do your own thing? See, that's a choice every single one of us has. Do I go the road that God has said, this is who you are, I will be with you? Do you follow that road? Pivot point. And you see that Joshua begins to embrace who God said he is. He begins to embrace everything that God said would be true. And he takes Israel across the Jordan River. He begins to experience all of these incredible military victories. And next thing you know, there's this joyous time because the nation of Israel, after hundreds of years, is finally inhabiting the promised land. It's incredible. It's a time that centuries ago, God had promised to Abraham, and to Isaac, and to Jacob, and now Joshua gets to see it come to fruition. What an incredible, incredible moment. It's joyous. Years of hard work come to a close. Right, graduates? And now here we come to the pivot point that we just read. It's the end of Joshua's life. The promised land has been conquered. We are now inhabiting where God said we could. The the land is amazing. The giants are all vanquished. And Joshua says, it's time for me to step down. He says, it's time because in light of everything that happened behind me, I'm saying to you, fellow leaders, choose. Choose today who you will serve. Choose today what direction you're going to walk in. Joshua knew what it meant to follow God. He had seen God do incredible miracles. He had learned under Moses. He learned his own role in God's story. He saw God be faithful time and time again. And now it was time to look at the future. And let's take just a moment and realize what the view that Joshua saw and maybe didn't even see. You see, Joshua realized that the story was bigger than him. He knew the story had happened before, centuries before with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He knew that the nation of Israel was now fulfilling a promise that was centuries old, but he knew that the promise wasn't over and that there was still so much more to come. He knew the story was so much bigger than himself. So Joshua chooses wisely. He says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God because he's the bigger one. And he says to everybody, all right, I want you to choose. I want you to choose what the best option for you is. He, of course, he wants them to choose God, right? It's, it's the best choice. It's not always the easiest choice. It's not always the most luxurious choice, but it is the choice that is good and pleasing and perfect, according to Romans 12, 2. And so they do. They choose. And if you continue on, Joshua 24, 16, they give the Sunday school answer. Oh, of course we're going to serve God. Picking it up in verse 16, the people replied, we would never abandon the Lord or serve other gods. For the Lord our God is the one who rescued us and our ancestors from slavery in the land of Egypt. He performed mighty miracles before our very eyes. As we traveled through the wilderness among our enemies, he preserved us. It was the Lord who drove out the Amorites and the other nations living in the land. So yeah, we're going to serve the Lord for he alone is God. They're, They're going to give the right answer. They should have added, for a while. Of course we're going to serve God until something distracts us. Of course we're going to follow God's ways until some shiny thing takes our eye off him. And so Joshua knows this. He knows that these kind of commitments can be somewhat short-lived. And so he says, you know what we need? We need a stone of remembrance. Because I want you to remember that right now you say that you are following God, that you are choosing God. And so picking it up in verse 24, he says, uh, the people say to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God. We will obey him alone. If you know the story, he's thinking, (laughs) yeah, right. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day at Shechem, committing them to follow the decrees and regulations of the Lord. Joshua recorded these things in the book of God's instructions, and as a reminder of their agreement, he took a huge stone and rolled it beneath the terebith tree beside the tabernacle of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, this stone has heard everything the Lord said to us. It will be a witness to testify against you if you go back on your word to God. It's a stone of remembrance. And Joshua says, okay, guys, this is real. 
The stone is here to remind us what you're going to do. Are you going to follow God? And for a while they did. And this verse is so packed. Verse 31 is so packed with meaning. 2431, it says this. The people of Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him. Those who had personally experienced all that the Lord had done for Israel. That last phrase, those that had personally experienced all that the Lord had done. Based on memories. Based on personal experience. The guys who had personally experienced God were in it for the win. They said, yes, we've seen God move. We know God. We know exactly who he is. We're going to commit. Choose this, choose this day. Choose God. Because I've got a personal experience with him. But the very next chapter, or the very next book, we see those that didn't have a personal experience with him quickly fall away. And that's the sad part of the story because the choice fades and the legacy fades. And when things are based on someone else's experience, things fade quickly. For so many of us, we've made our choice based on somebody else's experience. And that is the book of Judges. The book of Judges is the story of what happened after. Of all these generations that said, oh yeah, I remember that. My grandfather told me that story. I mean, I haven't personally experienced God, but, but grandpa did. A grandma had the greatest stories, but you know, it's not my thing. And so you have this idea of story after story after story, and some choose wisely. Some know the way of God, and they choose to do and follow his ways. But most of them say, you know what? I haven't experienced that. So I'm going to do me. I'm going to choose what I want because I don't have a personal experience with God because I'm basing it on somebody else's experience. And the truth is the world would love for us to choose the things that are focused on us. Satan would love to take our eyes off God. And when we haven't personally experienced him, that's super easy to do. And that is why the pivot point is so important. That is why tonight we need to talk about what a pivot point can mean for our lives. It is, it is the point of power that can direct your entire life. And whether you're graduating tonight or not, you have the opportunity to say, you know what, right here, this is a pivot point. This is a pivot point because I've looked at everything that came in the past and I think of everything that might come in the future and today my life is intersecting that legacy. Today my life is going to pivot. Choose today who you will serve. Choose who your next step is. One of the things I love about what Joshua says, he said, look, choose today who you will serve. If it's not the God, if you refuse to chase God, if you refuse to serve him, maybe it's the God of the past lands, of the side of the Euphrates in, in the Egypt, right? Maybe all that stuff that came before all that crazy stuff in your family, weird Uncle Carl and crazy Aunt Lady and the, with the cats and, right, like all that crazy stuff. Maybe you're just going to get into that stuff. If you're going to refuse to serve God, maybe there's something in your past and, and you're going to be John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith the 17th, right? Like maybe it's all the past. Hey! <laughs> or, or maybe it's you're going to choose the gods of the people in the land you're going to live. Maybe you're just going to get out of high school and you're going to go find yourself, right? I'm going, to, I'm going to look at the land that I live and I'm going to look at all the pretty gods that they have, stuff like TV and then social media, stuff like cool cars, really neat video games. Maybe you're going to serve the gods in the land that you're going to come into. Hey, you got to choose. But you can't base your experience on somebody. You can't base your belief and your pivot point on somebody else's experience. Wise guy I once knew said, God doesn't have any grandchildren. He only has children. God doesn't have any grandchildren. It means we don't inherit the faith of our parents. For some of you, you've been blessed to grow up with incredible parents who've loved God and have committed to him, and you've watched them do that, and you're like, that's so cool. I don't have that experience, but that's so cool. God doesn't have any grandchildren. We can't inherit faith. We can't inherit faith from our small group leaders. We 
can't inherit faith from our pastors, our friends, or any of our family. We have to make it personal, a personal choice. And right now for you graduates, it is the perfect time because you are naturally pivoting. You're already pivoting from high school and elementary school and all the things that happened in diapers onward. Some of you are still in diapers, don't tell us. We are in this natural pivot point. And so you have an opportunity. Now, let's get practical. Let's get really practical in our application This with this because you have to do both sides. You have to look at where you've been and you have to look at where you're going. In your past... God has sent you people. He has sent you parents. He sent you mentors, teachers, coaches. And some of them have been wonderful. Some of them not. But you're going to take away something from every single one. For some of them, you're going to take away what you want to copy. And for some of them, you're going to take away things you don't want to copy. God has sent people into your life. And you've got to choose who do you want to emulate. Who do you want to copy? What do you want to take out of dad's life? What do you want to see in grandma's life? What has God sent you? What do you want to take away from your past? So you also have to consider the future. I mean, where do I want to go? Right? Joshua said, we all choose to worship something. Choose today who you're going to serve. Maybe it's God. Maybe it's your old gods. Maybe it's the new gods. We all choose to focus our life on something. Where are we going to go with this? Because that something defines our life. Something we're going to pour our time into. Something we're going to pour our money into. Something we're going to pour our thought life into. Something we're going to worship. Maybe it's God. I hope it's God. But you're going to worship something. For some, it's money or success or fame. For some, it's the elusive happiness. Relationships, marriage, security, comfort. Nice cars, gadgets, the fancy house. We're all going to worship something. For some, it's sports or entertainment. For some of you, it's how many followers you have on social media. We're all going to worship something. For some, it's reputation. For some, it's what everybody else's opinion is for them. We're all going to worship something, so choose you this day who you're going to serve. Choose you this day. What is it you're going to intentionally put your time, energy, money, everything in? Joshua says, choose you this day. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And that's a great answer. It's the best answer because it is the big picture. God is the biggest picture there is. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It's a great answer if it's personal. Because some of us in here are church kids, and we've done the church thing, and we didn't want to lie to mom and dad because it's really important to them, but it's not really my thing, but I'm looking around, and everybody else is nodding, so, oh, yeah, I'm going to serve the Lord, yeah, but God doesn't have any grandchildren. It's got to be personal, and if it won't, if it's not, it won't last. It'll be empty, and it'll be unfulfilling. You see, legacy fade is a real thing. Choice fade is a real thing. In fact, it's legacy fade is one of the most dangerous problems facing the church today. Because we have all of these middle schoolers and high schoolers, and they're raising up, and they're they're coming to a graduation event like this, and they're hearing some some message like this. They're like, yeah, I'm going to choose God. But I don't have a personal experience to base that on. And then memories fade. And distractions get really attractive. And that legacy that we chose at that pivot point, we come to another pivot point, we begin to move in a different direction. Legacy fade is a big, big issue because our society loves to put their gods front and center in our lives. Legacy fade is something that is so real. As a parent, I have two teenagers, one who graduated last year, And so I can connect with the many parents who in this room are hearing this idea about legacy fade, and you're like, it was really scary. Because we have spent 17 or 18 or 22 years, depending on how old your kid took through high school, (laughs) pouring into them and hoping they make the right decisions, 
Will they look left before they cross the street? Will they touch the hot stove? Will they make the right choice? Like this, as a parent, right, that you hear this idea of legacy fade and you're like, I want them to do the right thing. Of course we do. The good news is there's good news. And that is you're in this room. And that means that they have, with at least a portion of their life, said, you know what? I'm going to intersect my life with God. And the fact that they're in this room and that you're at their table says, hey, these people are important in my life. So for parents, at least for tonight, no, you have a voice in your child's life. For the graduates in the room, look around the table. Some of you have big families. You have two tables. There's a lot of people who love you. There's a lot of people who are cheering you on, a lot of people who say, hey, I know your best choice, and you're right now, you're 18, and you don't know, but I'm here for you, and I love you, and I am ready to support the choice you're making today, because choose you this day who you will serve. I'm here for you. It's good news. But you know, we choose on a day like today, and for some of you, you're going to go home tonight, and the idea of choose you today what you're going to serve really is interesting until you open TikTok and then your mind's gone. And so we don't just make a choice, we have to make a sticky choice, a choice that sticks with us. How do you do that? How do you create sticky choices? Well, again, let's get really, really practical. All the graduates on your table, you have one of these. This is a stone of remembrance. And tonight when you leave, I want you to take this with you. There's nothing written on it right now. There's a Sharpie at your table. You can take it with you. And at some point when you are having a real time with God, I challenge you to write on this stone your choice tonight. Choose you today who you will serve. Maybe it's all the crazy past stuff from your family. Maybe it's everything that society is going to throw at you. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I want you to write on this stone today's date, or whenever you do it, tomorrow, then use tomorrow's date. I choose to serve what you choose. And on the other side, I want you to write the names of the people at your table. Because these are the people who are standing with you. They're championing you. They're cheering you on. It's a stone of remembrance. And then whether you're going to spend the next four days or the next four years in your parents' house, not four decades, please. This goes on your dresser, and it's a stone of remembrance. Just as Joshua said to the people, hey, this stone is going to remember the choice you made. Helps you to have a sticky choice. For some, though, you're going to have future pivot points. You're going to have future choices. So you need to start thinking right now, how am I going to have future stones of remembrance? Am I going to go invest in a lot of these? Build a wall in my house, in my room? For some people, it's through art or through journaling. But there's various ways that they chronicle their faith life. Because the thing about choosing God is it's not a one-time choice. A sticky choice has to be made again and again and again. So that's why things like journaling really help. Now, there are other things, things like prayer, things like reading your Bible, things like spending time on a Sunday morning or in a, a worship service. And for some of you, you're thinking that sounds a whole lot like religious hoops. And it is, if you don't have a personal experience. But for those who have a personal experience, you know that, hey, that's the way my choice is sticky. When I choose God, my time in the word is helping me stay to that choice. When I choose to be in prayer, that's my way of helping me to stick to that choice. When I choose to surround myself with fellow believers and we worship, that's my way of choosing to have a sticky choice. It's not about rules. It's about choose you this day and stick to it. There's a lot of other practical ways for some of its relationships. It's about having a critical friend, an accountability partner who doesn't mind looking you in the face and said, dude, you're fading. 
It's about a critical friend. For some, it's a mentor, a parent, a family friend, a coach, a pastor, someone who's going to say, hey, let's, let's walk journey together because I don't want you to fade. And the sad truth is so many high school graduates are in a room like this at this time of the year all across the nation, and they're hearing a message like this, and they're like, yeah, but in two months, they're going to be at college, and their choice will have faded. We need practical things in our lives to make our choice sticky. That means being in church, coming on a Sunday morning. That means being in a small group, having a mentor. It means serving, serving in the church because God has equipped you in so many ways. He's equipped you. There, there are, I'm looking out at this room, and I see those of you who are already serving in children's ministry, in the, in the production booth. I see those of you who are on guest experience. I see those who do logistics. I see those of you who are gifted worship leaders. So on and on and on, God has gifted you to serve. And staying in a serving position is a fantastic, practical way to make your choice sticky. There's so many practical ways of doing it. There's college ministries here at North Point. We have Rooted. I hear some Rooted fans in the house. Does Rooted help your choice get sticky? All right. Plug in. Get Rooted. There are so many things that you have available to you tonight. And when you sit down with you and God in a rock and a Sharpie, start thinking about, all right, here's my choice. How am I going to make it sticky? What am I going to do intentionally? Because everybody ends up somewhere, but a few people end up somewhere on purpose. And I want to end up somewhere on purpose. I'm going to choose today what direction my life is going to take. There's so much. Joshua understood that legacy was bigger than he was. He understood that since the time of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, people have been talking about the promised land. And now he was the guy to take the nation in. He knew legacy was bigger than him. And he knew that if for hundreds of years they've been talking about this land, they're going to be here long after he's dead. He knew legacy was bigger than him. Our legacy is too. We all have a story that's bigger than ourselves. A similar, similar opportunity to ask ourselves, what is our legacy? We consider the past, we consider the future, and it pivots on tonight. What will your pivot point be? Will you, like Joshua, say, as for me and my house, I'm going to choose the Lord. I'm going to choose God because he's the biggest picture there is. And if this legacy thing is bigger than me, I'm going to look for the biggest thing I can anchor to, and I'm going to make that my anchor. And God's the biggest thing there is. That's what we're looking for. We can only do this if our faith is personal. Don't, don't make a decision tonight. Don't write on your rock based on, hey, that's what everybody else was doing, and it was an emotion, and, and Pastor Lance really wanted me to, and my parents really wanted me to, so I'm going to write that on my rock so that mom and dad do my laundry and they bring it in, they're going to see that on my rock. Because without a personal experience, it will be unfulfilling and it will be empty. For some of you, you hear that and you're like, okay, then I don't want an unfulfilling and empty rock experience. The good news is it can be personal for you. If tonight you're hearing my words and you're like, what does that mean? You should know that Jesus stands with his arms wide open and he says, I know that you were broken, and I know that you have messed up, and I know that your past is anything but perfect. I know that you don't deserve to be anchored to the God of the universe, but I'm here to help make it possible. And if you turn away from all of that gunk, I will forgive everything and become your leader. I will make it possible for you to experience me because God doesn't have any grandchildren. He just has children. And the only way to be a child of God is by saying yes to Jesus. 
It's by saying, God, I want that personal experience because I'm afraid that I'm going to anchor in something too small. I'm afraid that the world is going to get so shiny that I'm going to get distracted and then I'm going to fall flat on my face because I don't have an anchor that holds. I want a rock of remembrance that means something bigger than me. So if that's you tonight, I I want you to consider that Jesus stands ready with his arms wide open. He's ready for you to experience him in a personal way. A personal way as your forgiver and as your leader and as your path forward. So as we close tonight, we're going to pray. We're going to close our night with a video that considers the future and what the possibilities are. Will you join me in prayer? Oh God, thank you so much for this time we've had here tonight. Thank you so much for these graduates these 12 men and women who stand here at a pivot point. And in these few weeks, as they consider the end of high school and they consider what's next, as they celebrate all the friendships and all the memories that have come, and they dream of all the things that are to come in the future, God, I pray right now a blessing on them. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be with them and that you would capture their hearts, that you would capture their minds, and that they would be face-to-face with the question, Who will I serve? And they will hear your invitation to choose you, to make you their anchor point. God, I pray that you would surround them with loving family, friends, who will cheer them on in your direction, God. And they will know that in a night like tonight, they can choose a legacy that is eternal. God, I know there are some within the sound of my voice who have no idea what it means to have a personal experience with you. God, for those, I I pray that their hearts would be stirred and that they would hear your invitation and they would lay down their broken past, their sins and their failures, everything that's holding them down. They would give them to you so that you could forgive them and become their leader. God, no matter where we're at in our life, whether we're graduates, whether we're parents, whether we're small group leaders, whether we're younger siblings, God, may this be a night that is meaningful. May this be a night that pivots and we consider everything that's happened in the past and everything that is to come and we do a course correction. We point our decision at you and we say, as for me, I will serve the Lord. Amen. Hey guys, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Griffin Foxworth. I'm the young adult pastor here at North Point Church, and I just want to send you guys this message to congratulate all of you seniors who are graduating high school. This is a massive achievement. We're all so proud of you, and we can't wait to see what God's going to do in your lives moving forward. I'm here to tell you today about Rooted, which is your next step after Journey. And so through this summer, you're going to be transitioning from Journey to Rooted. Hey guys. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Griffin Foxworth. I'm the young adult pastor here at North Point Church, and I just want to send you guys this message to congratulate all of you seniors who are graduating high school. This is a massive achievement. We're all so proud of you, and we can't wait to see what God's going to do in your lives moving forward. I'm here to tell you today about Rooted, which is your next step after Journey. And so through this summer, you're going to be transitioning from Journey to Rooted, and you're going to be joining the young adult ministry here at North Point. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. The first thing is that we don't typically operate or normally operate in a large group setting. You're going to be joining a new small group that you're going to be meeting with hopefully weekly and you're going to grow together as you move through this next phase of life. We do have large group events about quarterly where we bring all the small groups together to fellowship and uh, spend time with one another and just grow together as a whole ministry. We offer different classes and sessions throughout the year that we're going to start up again soon like financial matters where we're going to walk you guys through how to uh, manage your finances as you as you kind of move into adulthood. There's a lot to figure out there. Uh, we're going to bring in some counselors just to talk to us about maturity and mental health and growing as uh, you, you guys move into a, a strange new world of adulthood. And uh, we're really excited to walk through all those things with you guys. So Rooted is founded on four major pillars that I want to tell you guys a little bit about. The first is that we are scripture founded. That means that everything that we do has a foundation in scripture. 
All of our lessons, all of our small groups are scripture-based. We're going to be teaching you about the Bible. We're going to be walking you through passages. And we're going to grow your knowledge of scripture and your appreciation and trust in scripture through this time. The second thing is that we're family-oriented. The reason that we do mostly small groups is that we want you guys to feel like you're a part of a family. Going off to college and, and starting a new life in adulthood, it doesn't feel like a lot of things are changing, especially if you're still living at home and stuff like that, but really, a lot of things are changing. It can be a really lonely time. And so we want to give you guys an opportunity to be a part of a new family so you guys can walk through this new journey together. The next thing is that we're maturity directed. Unfortunately, guys, you are legal adults now. It's time to grow up. We're going to show you guys that growing up doesn't mean that you can't have fun and enjoy yourself. We're just going to show you that maturity, mental maturity and spiritual maturity, what it means as we go through Rooted together. The last thing is that we're community invested. We want to do things to better our community. We want to show the world that young adults are forced to be reckoned with and that we can get a lot of stuff done and help the people around us and give back from all the things that we've received during this time. I can't wait to get to know you all better and uh, see you all grow during this incredible time of development and your new journey as you get rooted into uh, the next few years of your life. And so uh, I just really can't wait to meet you guys. And I'm just going to bless you guys real quick. Lord, uh, thank you for these students. Thank you for all that they've accomplished. Thank you for all the wonderful things going on in their lives. I can't wait to see what you're going to do for them. Lord, please give them peace and joy as they move through this uh, difficult transition and into a new world that is just hard. Being an adult is hard. And Lord, just please help us to remember that if we walk through this together, we'll, uh, we'll do better. And so Lord, I'm thankful for them. Can't wait to see what you're going to do with them, Lord. Jesus, in your prayer. Amen. Thanks, guys.